Shah Zaman discovered the cheating of his brother's wife. To be honest, this was the only thing that made him feel better about himself. Therefore, he stopped thinking of his wife. He felt hungry at that moment, so he picked up the apple that was located on the table next to him. Not only that, but he also ordered a very big meal. Later that night, his brother Shireyer came back from his hunting journey. He hurried to make sure his brother was all right. To his surprise, he found his brother to have better attitudes. He felt glad for sure, but he was curious to know what magic stick had made him that different. Shireyer said, I'm happy you came over your sadness, but allow me to know what the thing was that made you that miserable and what the thing was that made you this cheerful. Shah Zaman said, I ask for your pardon if I said the first and kept the second. Shireyer insisted on being informed about both issues, so Shah Zaman told him the whole story. As you insist, I shall tell you about my eternal shock. It started while I was getting ready to visit you. I returned to my palace to say goodbye to my wife, but I found her sleeping with a black slave on my bed. I couldn't bear that, so I took my sword out of its sheath and killed both of them. From then on, I couldn't stop thinking of that incident. Shireyer said, I understand your feelings now. That's why you were so gloomy all the time. Now tell me, how did you change the mood during my journey away? You won't believe me, but it's no good for me to tell you or to keep you ignorant of it. Today, as you've left with your company for the hunting journey, I looked at the garden from my window, and nothing could shock me more than what I saw, not even seeing my wife with the slave. What was that, brother? I saw your wife coming through the gate of the palace accompanied by twenty men and women from your servants and slaves. Your wife was hugging one of them and kissing him, then they all got naked and started that indecent party. If you want proof, then pretend you're going away tomorrow afternoon and come watch from here. Oh my god. I can't believe it. My wife loves me more than anyone on earth does. She's the love of my life. I picked her here among all my people and made her a queen. They do it, brother. They pursue their desires and lusts, brother. You have to believe me. Shireyer couldn't believe something in his head told him that Shah Zaman was jealous of him for the worst scandal committed by his wife. But he decided that he wanted the proof tomorrow for sure. The proof of her innocence from the window of his brother was his plan for the next day. In the afternoon of that next day, Shireyer pretended to set up his journey to hunt, but he hid in his brother's bedroom. Sooner, his wife entered from the big gate of the palace, surrounded by twenty servants and slaves kissing and hugging each other. She was kissing a black slave. All this was witnessed through the eyes of Shireyer, who went crazy. Shireyer suggested leaving the whole kingdom until they could explain why such things happened to them. The two brothers sneaked out of the palace. They traveled for days and days until they reached a tree in a garden with a spring in it and a huge salty sea besides. They were taking a rest when the sea agitated like they had never seen before. Then a black row showed off, reaching to the sky. As they saw it, they felt scared, so they climbed up the tree. They watched a giant genie with a box on his head. He came to the beach, became close to the tree, and sat near it. He opened the box and grabbed a can. As the genie opened it, a very beautiful lady appeared as a splendid sun. The genie said to her, Oh, 
Lady of the Ladies, the lady who I kidnapped on her wedding night. I'd like to sleep a little. He put his head on her lap and went to sleep. The lady looked up and saw the brothers, Shah Zaman and Shireyer. She removed the head of the genie from her lap and pointed at them to get down. They said, Pardon, Pardon us, us, but we but cannot, we cannot get, down. get down. She said, Come and sleep with me before the genie wakes up. Get down, or I'll make him kill both of you. The brothers had nothing to do but obey. The girl said, Come and sleep with me before the genie wakes up. They trembled, but were too scared to say no. Therefore, they did it. After that, the lady picked out of her pocket a bag full of 570 rings, all belonging to men who she slept with while the genie was sleeping. She said to them, Hurry up and give me your rings. She continued, The genie kidnapped me on my wedding night, put me in a jar in a box with six locks, and threw me in the dark bottom of the sea. But he forgot that if a woman wanted to do a thing, nothing would stop her from doing it. The brothers felt so stoned. They said to each other, Look at a genie who suffers worse than us. This made them feel better. The brothers went back to Shireyer's kingdom. They reached the palace. As Shireyer saw his wife, he killed her with the other twenty slaves and servants who had done the shameful and haram deed with her. He felt disgusted with every woman on earth. He started getting married to a girl at night and killing her the next morning. He continued doing that for three years, until the people of his kingdom felt sick of his behavior and made their daughters flee. Shireyer asked for a new bride for the next night, but the minister nodded his head and said, I'm sorry, your majesty, but no bride seems to be ready for tonight. Shireyer became agitated with anger and said, Come on, give me a bride. If you can't do it, tomorrow might be your last day in this palace. The minister went home so nervous and worried. He had the most beautiful girl, who was called Shirazade, and a younger girl, called Doniazid. Shirazade said, my father, what is it that bothers you? The minister said, Oh, my beloved Shahrazad, I'm in serious trouble. The king needs a new wife, while all the girls were smuggled outside the kingdom for what the king does. The thing would affect not only my position but also my life. Shahrazad said in pain, so nothing could stop the slaughterer except me. What? Stop and don't say it! But, father, I see myself as very able to stop him. Let me try! Don't even think of it! Father, I can't see him slaughtering innocent girls every day and stay still. I can try. If I succeed, then I'll liberate the whole women in our kingdom. And if I can't do it, then I'll be a martyr, and God for sure will accept my sacrifice. 